Rome. All right, good morning, folks. My last speech, I had the pleasure to uh, talk about stand-up comedy, a pretty easy subject. Today, it's going to be a little harder, a serious subject. Second Amendment rights. You all remember filling out that that uh, survey about Second Amendment rights, and I believe only about five of you said that you'd actually fired a firearm before, and so only two of you had the courage to stand up in the survey and say, yes, I would support legislation that would allow for concealed carry in the great state of Illinois. So today we're going to look at why we should all support concealed carry, because it would be in our own best interest. First, and, and then secondly, we'll clear up some of the myths along the way behind concealed carry. First of all, let's look at the legally sound principle of concealed carry. It comes straight from the Constitution. A lot of you actually answered the question right, uh, what does the Constitution say about concealed carry? And so, just to be perfectly clear here, in my pocket Constitution, Amendment number two. <laughs> a well-regulated motion being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So it's important to note that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed is the, uh, the important clause in that sentence, and that the part saying uh, a well-regulated militia being important to the security of a free state is dependent upon that first clause. And so it's like saying the right to the people to keep and bear arms is important, and we're bringing it up because a well-regulated well militia is important, or otherwise it's important for people to be able to defend their own country or state. And so we could spend this entire speech just talking about the constitutional basis of the Second Amendment for concealed carry, but we'll move on from it from here with the uh, understanding that it is part of the original intent of the founders for everyone to hold a gun on their person. It's also interesting to note that the reason why the Chicago handgun law was just recently struck down in 2010 is because of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, the Due Process Clause, which says that all people essentially would be protected under the laws together. And so, for that reason, the Second Amendment then applies to all states and municipalities. Incidentally, someone on that sheet said, I don't know how to spell bear and bear arms, right? It's actually B-E-A-R, -E it's like a regular bear, fun fact. <laughs> so let's now look at a map of concealed carry in the United States. As you can see, our home state of Illinois here is the only state in the Union that does not allow some form of concealed carry. These states in blue here represent states that will issue concealed carry permits to their citizens, or states that will uh, issue concealed carry uh, permits to their citizens and not other citizens of other states. So like if you live in a state that does not, for instance, support concealed carry, you could register through one of these dark blue states and get an out-of-state permit through them. The states here in uh, brown, that one, those are, those are states that say they might issue a concealed carry if you give the police like enough of a reason that you should have one. But these ones in blue here are shall issues. If you meet the requirements, they shall issue you a concealed carry permit. And Illinois, of course, is the only black one which says we don't have concealed carry at all. So now let's take a look at why concealed carry makes us safe in the first place. We can fight back, essentially. Criminals will always have guns. That's just a fact of life. Guns are forever. It's a genie that's been let out of the bottle. They don't deteriorate. There will be always plenty of ammo. So criminals will always have a way to find guns. Just look at Prohibition back in the 1920s. We tried to outlaw alcohol, but criminals were always able to find alcohol. So if criminals will always have guns, law-abiding citizens should have guns as well to balance the power. Look at it this way. If a cop was sitting here, one of the COD, uh, one of the COD public safety people, we would all feel pretty safe that he's sitting here. We all, we all trust this cop just because he wears the uniform. But why would we not trust a citizen who went through the time it takes to get a concealed carry permit if we had one in the state of Illinois, went through the proper testing, and thought it important enough to protect his safety and those around him to carry a gun? We should trust our fellow citizens just as much as we would trust cops. They're just human beings, too. 
It's also important to look at cases like, this is an emotional thing, but I would have to bring it up. When seconds count, police are only minutes away. The Northern Illinois University website for Campus Alerts webpage accessed last night reported it only took two minutes for police to respond to the shooting at NIU. However, by then it was already too late. The guy had already killed himself and about five others with him. The point is, when seconds are ticking, the police are only minutes away. The point being that we should be able to defend ourselves in the moments of an attack because by the time the police get there, it's already too late. And and also it's interesting to note that in cases of school shootings, they're often at point blank range. So you don't exactly have to be a dead eye shot to be able to shoot back against an attacker when they're not very far away in the first place. In my uh, speech outline, Sonny mentioned the Daniel Den the Giffords case in Arizona. And there were a few people there that had some concealed carry permits, but they didn't end up shooting that guy. The reason why is because in Gifford's case, there was a table outside of the Safeway. Six minutes? Okay. There was a table outside of the Safeway, and the people were all gathered around her, just like huddled around her. So once some guy went off and shot her, people in the back of the crowd couldn't easily get a clear shot of the guy. But thankfully, like, a retired army colonel actually wrestled with the guy to the ground while another, like, hit him over the head with the chair. So there, some citizens were able to uh, get some safety without necessarily using concealed carry. Now, some of you might be thinking, what if someone who has a concealed carry permit snaps and decides to go on a shooting rampage? Well, if someone snaps and decides to go on a shooting rampage, they can find a gun if they want to anyways, whether or not they have a concealed carry permit. And second of all, people don't just generally snap. They have signs of uh, mental fatigue that, and they will generally save somebody else beforehand that they're thinking and contemplating something terrible like this. And so it's our duty as a society not just to prevent our friends from drink, drink, drunk driving, but also to um, be aware when they have very antisocial thoughts going on in their head. Have you ever seen the movie Taxi Driver? There was a scene, the most important scene in that movie is where this guy, a taxi driver, the person who eventually goes on a shooting rampage, mentions to his friend that he's been thinking about a lot of bad things. That's like the key point in the movie because it was his friend's duty to really get him some help at that point, but he did. And so our safety not only depends just on our own ability to defend ourselves, but to look out for when our fellow citizens might be in mental trouble as well. A real quick note, gun-free zones are actually unsafe, simply because uh, assassins look for gun-free zones because they know no one there will be able to shoot back. So if we find safety in saying this is a school, it's a gun-free zone, we should really be thinking the opposite. There is no one here who would be able to shoot back from an attacker. So I'm going to state a few sources real quickly as to the states that have implemented concealed carry are safer states, or at least they haven't seen increases in violence from concealed carry, as many of you wrongly believe would happen if we had concealed carry here. The State Journal Register of Springfield, Illinois, on concealed carry in the U.S. cites the state of Vermont with 136 cases of violent crime per 100,000 residents in 2008 as one of the lowest violent crime rates in the nation. And incidentally, the state of Vermont is like the most open concealed carry state in the, in the world. You don't even need a permit. A 2006 issue of the Wisconsin Policy Institute report last exist from, this web, uh, from their website last night quotes Katie Bauer, one of the administrators of Michigan's 2001 concealed carry law. What we found is that there's been no significant increase in crime because the people getting permits are law-abiding people. There have been a few cases where we've had problems, but it's not statistically significant. And finally, in a 1998 book, More Guns and Less Crime, economics researcher John Locke's analysis of crime report data claims the statistically significant effect of concealed carry laws and crimes with more permissive concealed carry laws correlated with a decrease in overall crime. Lot study FBI crime statistics from 1977 to 1993 and found that the passage of concealed carry laws resulted <coughs> in a murder rate reduction of 8.5%, rape reduction of 5% reduction, and aggressive assault reduction of 7%. In conclusion, we've seen, we've seen why concealed carry is a legitimate idea based upon a constitutional understanding. And it will only make us safer. So now, we should vote in favor of concealed carry whenever we have the option, whether in a uh, state 
uh, state uh, amendments to the process. Thank you. Thank you, Julia.